I have one more method to show you, and then I'll take questions. Um, this one also, just it's just crazy that this works. And I remember the first time I saw this, I couldn't believe it. Um, it's just randomness. So let me explain what I mean here. Uh, I'm going to basically build something by rolling a die. Um, and I've just labeled the corners of this triangle randomly. There's a 1 and a 2, a 1 corner, a 3 and a 4, a 1 corner, a 5 and a 6 corner. I'm going to play a game. It's sort of, I'm just going to do this randomly. Pick a random spot in the triangle. So there's a random spot. And then I'm going to roll a die. If it rolls on a 1 or 2, I'll go halfway towards the 1 or 2 from wherever I, my dot is and draw a new dot there. If I roll a 3 or 4, same thing. I'll go halfway to the 3, 4 corner. If I roll a 5 or 6, I'll go halfway to the 5, 6 corner. Now let's see what happens. So I roll, let's say I roll, and I get a th 3. So I go halfway to that corner. New dot. And then I roll a 6. So I go halfway to that corner from where I just was. See what I'm doing here? And then I roll again, and I get a 1. So I go halfway to that corner. And then I roll another six, and I go halfway to that corner. And I'm just kind of bopping around here, OK? Now, I don't know. It doesn't seem like much is going to happen here. But um, people online have been nice enough to provide me with applets to let me do this not just several times, but thousands of times. So let's see what happens if I do this 2,400 times. And let's see what happens if I do it 4,200 times, or 7,000 times. And then if I let it go for a while and I do 30,000 times, that's what it looks like. So just by doing this little game of rolling a die and randomly bopping around, I get Sierpinski's triangle again. So this fourth method, the connections we're getting here are incredible, right? Like, so not only is our notion of dimension blasted from doing this, but Somehow, fractals and numbers and randomness are all tied up in some weird way that we're only beginning to understand. And I would say this is, the, I mean, right now there are whole fields of mathematics that are based on trying to understand how deep these connections go. And now what, what it allows us to do, and the reason mathematicians love this so much is, if I have a problem with numbers, I don't just have to say, OK, I'm going to just solve this using numbers. Because people have been trying to do that for hundreds of years. And you know, if Euler didn't figure it out, you know, I don't know if I'm going to figure it out myself. But what Euler didn't have is I can say, I wonder if I can translate my problem with numbers into a problem about fractals. And then I wonder if I can take that problem with fractals, maybe work on it a little bit, and translate it into a problem about randomness, and then translate it back into a problem about numbers. Euler could not do that. You know, I've now got some real tools this allows us, these connections allow us to see things that we've never seen before. Things about nature, I think. Uh, the beautiful stock of wheat here, I guess. Um, we're understanding things like this uh, because I'm actually lying. It's not a stock of wheat. It's an L system that's formed by that. Um, this is stage eight of an L system. But somehow, right, fractals and nature seem to be mirroring each other. And randomness and fractals are coming out that way. We're getting the partition numbers through the connection between numbers and fractals. Prime numbers have been understood better, in a way, as somehow randomly distributed. That was one of the great breakthroughs in the study of prime numbers. Doing something once gets you started. Doing it again and again, and seeing what the connections are after each step, this is where you really start to understand the nature of things. This is where you see where the real mysteries lie and give yourself the connections to create whole new ideas, whole new fields. And that's the moral of the story. Thanks for your time. And do I have time for a couple questions? So let me just take a couple questions. Uh, yeah. Is it possible that the Sierpinski triangle could be zeroth dimension? G I mean, you really need to look into what, I mean, in a way, as soon as you start asking questions like that, you need to really start saying, well, what do I mean when I say dimension? And dimension is another one of those things that there's a lot of ways to think about it. I think that, I mean, I think the accepted value of Sierpinski's triangle's dimension is 1.58, et cetera, et cetera. 
So zeroth dimension, probably not. Generally, we usually talk about points when we talk about that. Or the fourth dimension. You know, we do have a really interesting question of like, if what, what kind of dimensions can we get uh, when we build fractals? And what we start to see is that there's a lot of things start showing up between the first and second dimension, between the second and third dimension, between the third and fourth dimension. Uh, and those measurements actually do mean something intuitive once you start getting used to it. Yeah. Yeah. What happens if you uh, scale up a third dimensional figure by two? Well, it depends what you do. You can build a Sierpinski tetrahedron or, or a Sierpinski pyramid in the, the three dimensional analog of that. I think you have to do the calculation, but I actually think that it might end up being exactly two dimensional one way. But it, it depends. You have to do the calculations for each one. But sometimes they come out very nicely. Sometimes they're, sometimes they're whole dimensions, sometimes they're totally weird in between dimensions. Yeah? Uh, is it possible that there's any more methods that resolve to Sierpinski's triangle? I mean, these are the four that I happen to know about. My guess is there's probably a couple more that I don't even, I've never even heard of. And my, my other guess is there are probably more waiting to be discovered. And that's how this goes, you know? Every time you think you know something, somebody comes along and changes the whole game by connecting something to something else in a way that nobody ever thought of, and, and the whole field explodes. So that's, so I would start looking if I were you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who is Sierpinski? That's a great question. I didn't do my research on this. He, I believe he was a 20th century, early 20th century mathematician who was the first one to, to invent it. Uh, uh, Eastern European, but I can't remember which country. Yeah. And last question? Yeah. Oh, you know another method. I don't think we have time to do it, but maybe you should talk to her afterwards. Um, I want to I wanna end just by wishing everyone a happy Valentine's Day. And I, I stole this graphic from xkcd.com. But, uh, uh, <laughs> thanks all for your time.